the 17th and 18th centuries in Europe, artists were commissioned to create intricate and elaborate designs from colored sand, sugars, and marble dust for the banquet tables of wealthy patrons. The paintings were laid out under glass on a large table, and when the feast was over, the painting was discarded along with the leftovers. This elaborate process was called table decking. A Bavarian table decker named Benjamin Zorbel was upset about losing his works of art, so he invented a means of permanently affixing the sand to a board with a clear adhesive. As more and more craftsmen began working with sand as their medium, the art form became known as marmo tinto, meaning to tint stone. Like many handicrafts practiced during the Georgian and Victorian er eras, marmo tinto did not remain popular for long, and these pieces are rare. But modern materials make it much easier for us to create sand paintings, and I'll show you two techniques that keep the sand suspended in glue so that the mess is greatly reduced. Clean sand can be collected from local sources, or pre-colored sand may be purchased for greater color variety. Or you could use a combination of both. The first application involves mixing sand together with glue in a squeeze bottle. So to begin with, I'm going to pour out about a third of the glue from this bottle. This is Elmer's washable clear glue. And don't worry, it won't be wasted. Um, so to this bottle, I'm going to add sand. I've got a little funnel here that helps me. And this is just a black. I'm going to use for an outlining. So I'm going to add sand to the bottle and I want to leave some room in this bottle so that I can mix the sand. Now that can be accomplished in a couple of ways. Craft sticks would do a great job or you can just let gravity help you out and just turn the, pot, the bottle occasionally. It can be mixed by shaking or stirring. So I've got this, this sand is pretty well mixed. I sort of pre-mixed this one. I'm going to use this to outline um, onto a tile. Now any substrate could be used for this, really. The process could be done on a canvas panel, a hardboard panel, some canvas. These examples are done on watercolor paper and a bisque tile. The bisque tile is porous, so the glue does dry a little more quickly as it's absorbed onto the tile. So I'm going to begin by just making my black outline since I'm doing kind of a craftsman type tile here. And the glue is pretty easy to work with. I'm going to do a little craftsman flower. So I will let this dry completely before I fill it in. Now if there are hand strength issues, or if you just want more control over the sand paint, it can be mixed right in a plastic palette. So remember that glue I poured out before? I'm just going to pour that into my palette and add some sand right to it. This is about a 50-50 mix, I would say. So I'm going to mix it right in my palette. And just fill it, I'm going to fill in this leaf. And now this is just, you could use a brush for this. You could move it around with any kind of tool, craft stick, modeling tool. It can be put on relatively thickly or you could spread it into thinner area or thinner application. As far as color mixing, you could mix your colors, the sands dry and create a mix or you could do it in layers. Um, for a very crisp line, you could 
trail the glue onto your surface and sprinkle sand off and then the excess could be shaken off. When cleaning up, remove the sand from your brush with a paper towel before you wash it. Just that will just minimize any sand going down your drain. The sand mixture in the plastic palette can just be left to dry and then you can peel that off and discard it. Try using sand as a medium of expression. The results are striking, textural, and definitely out of the ordinary. For a complete materials list and a PDF of this lesson plan and many more, please visit dickblick.com.